Hey guys, how's it going? I'm here with Coach Mark Carroll. How you doing? And we're going to discuss diet breaks today. So for those of you who may not know Mark, Mark is the coach of current WBFF world champion Lauren Simpson, as well as you coach a lot of the top girls in the WBFF. And you're very like you were a very hands-on trainer, so you were in-person PT, right? Yep. And now you do mostly online. Online now. Yeah. So I always did PT face to face until this year where I just specifically do online coaching now. Now, I think what's cool about Mark is because he has that in the trenches experience of a lot of coaching, hands-on coaching, you've recently started incorporating a lot of diet breaks. And I think this past year when you trained Lauren for world championships was the first year that she actually used something like diet breaks, right? Yeah, so she never used to really do that stuff. She'd do more of a generic one day refeed yeah. on a Sunday or more an untracked untracked cheat meal so for her prep we did incorporate more mini diet breaks so for her and for a lot of your clients are they different from client to client how did you set hers up and how do you normally do a diet break i guess there's kind of three keys to how i diet break um or how frequently i diet break is number one how severe the calorie deficit is the more mm -hmm. severe the calorie deficit the more frequently they'll diet break how long they've been dieting. Again, the longer they've been dieting, you're gonna need a longer diet break. And then the third one is how lean the individual is. So obviously doing a lot of comp prep, I deal with a lot of really lean lean girls. Yeah. So generally they need a diet break more often. For someone like Lauren, we only actually did a short prep for Wells because we did the powerlifting. So mm -hmm. we, we kind of- Yeah, she only prepped like eight, eight weeks, weeks, right? Yeah. yeah. So, so Lauren, she stays pretty lean in her off season. Yeah, but for Lauren, when I met her, um, she had placed second in the world and her body kind of lacked a lot of curves. So mm -hmm. what we, what I did was build her up, which she hated. So um, she went from about 58 kilos when we started and then up to 64 kilos. Mm -hmm. So put on about six kilos, which she hated, um, doing powerlifting. And then we had eight weeks to get her down and I wanted to get her to compete around 60 kilos. So about mm -hmm. two kilos more, more shape, more size. But it worked for her. It worked and she became Ladies, world champion. don't, don't. I know the scale freaks you out, but it's very important. And especially like Holly, same way, like she competed heavier, did better. You know That's what I it. mean? So it's, if you can put on that lean body mass. In the right places. Lean body mass looks good. Fat is what looks bad. Don't tell me that you've got too much bulk. Lean body mass looks good. Especially when it's on the glutes, things like that. Right, which right. It, it looks good. So with um, Lauren, we only had eight weeks. Um, but again, so with her, her body. So you don't have a lot of time to put in a lot of diet Yes, yeah, so I didn't need to. So we kind of needed to obviously keep in a deficit. Yeah. Um, I equated for just going over the calculations. We needed to lose about three kilos, mm -hmm. roughly a 500 calorie deficit for about six weeks. So mm -hmm. I tried to incorporate about two, two, week, two weeks in total of those eight weeks to be diet breaks. Okay. Now, did you run those consecutively or were they broken up? How did you disperse So those? I quite like with my clients, especially when they get lean, is more frequent mini diet breaks. So that's more okay. my method. So I often use a more like an, an 11 and three method. So 11 days, 11 to 14 days in a calorie deficit, then three day diet breaks. So rather than doing a generic one day refeed, I think the research seems to show about three days minimum is needed for positive Yeah, there, there was a, a, a new study that's gonna come out soon from uh, Dr. Bill Campbell, where they did show a positive effect with two days in a row. But I think that what they have shown is that one day doesn't seem to, to touch it. I think leptin levels spike yeah, and so, they drop back down. Right, so you will get a spike in leptin levels, but the, the problem becomes is transient spikes in leptin don't seem to do a whole lot in terms of your actual metabolic rate, right? Yeah. So the question is, is the refeed or diet break you're putting in sufficient to offset the extra calories that you're eating, right? Exactly. Because if you're putting in a diet break or a refeed where you eat 2,000 more calories, but you only burn, and you burn an extra 1,000 calories, well then there's an extra 1,000 calories you actually stored. Exactly. So what you're trying to do and I assume what, what I usually do is I take calories up to what I think the top end of their maintenance is. And then, uh, so hopefully they don't gain any body fat, but it gives their metabolism just that little bump. Yeah, so again, you want to be cautious depending on where they are in their prep. Right. So earlier on the diet break, you can go up to more their true TDE. Again, mm -hmm. if they've been dieting for a long time, lost a lot of weight, more likely metabolic adaptations kicked in. Yeah. So they're not actually going to be at their true TDE. So right. this is where I generally go more conservative. Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes I don't even take them all the way up 
up normally about, maybe about a minimum about 400 calorie increase, mm -hmm. four to 500 calories. Um, and yeah, so how I personally like to do diet breaks is what we want to do is drive carbohydrates up. Mm -hmm. So I normally bring, I think you do, I've learned from you as well, the same thing is we back off protein a little bit. When your calories are up higher, you don't actually probably need as much protein as right. when you're in the calorie yeah. deficit. Calories are protein sparing. So if you consume more calories, you actually require less protein. 100%. So therefore, I normally back protein down, which I will also then back down fat. So I try to bring fats down to more of a minimum requirement, which for me is normally about 0 0.7 grams per kilo of mm -hmm. body weight. That's the lowest I'll normally go until the maybe the final weeks of prep. What that does is allows us to have more calories to push towards carbohydrates, right. which seems to be have that positive effect on the leptin. Yeah, there's yeah. so if you look at the research on leptin, fats don't really, at least in the short term, seem to increase leptin levels. Protein is modest, but probably because of the gluconeogenic effect of protein where it gets converted to glucose. Yep. Glucose, high insulinogenic carbohydrates seem to have the biggest effect on leptin. At least based on the, the mechanistic research, trying to push more carbohydrate uh, probably is more beneficial in terms of leptin. Now, whether that translates into, you know, kind of real world viability, we don't really know that yet, yep. but based on the research and the mechanisms, probably should push more towards that. So um, I'm completely in line with that. And I think what also you said is that, um, you know, as you get leaner, you actually tend to do more diet breaks. Yep. And I think that's a really important point because a lot of people, don't realize that, you know, when I talk, and I talked about in the complete contest prep guide, if you look at kind of a, a synopsis of all the uh, competition prep case studies on natural athletes, what you find is they lose about 70% uh, body fat and 30% lean body mass. Now, before you all freak out, it's lean not, body mass is not, not the same muscle. thing as muscle, right? A lot of it's body fluid, um, your intestines, liver, uh, all your organs, they do lose a little bit of size when you, when you, um, when you diet. So um, the actual muscle loss is much, much less. The actual muscle tissue loss is much, much less than you would think. That being said, lean body mass is more metabolically active. Yes. And you also don't lose it. It's not like every single week you're losing 70% uh, fat, 30% lean body mass. What you're actually doing is the more body fat you have, the greater percentage of body fat you're losing, less lean body mass you're losing. As you start to get leaner and leaner, you're gonna lose a greater percentage of lean body mass each week than you did previously. That's why it's probably really important to right. incorporate more frequent diet breaks as you get leaner because it's gonna help you spare that lean body mass. Yeah, you wanna do more things to protect that muscle mass, especially right. when you get leaner and you often see, especially for us com um, where we're coaching natural competitors is that the lean they get, that muscle mass compared to more um, enhanced competitors really makes that difference in that back end of that prep when they get really lean. So for Lauren, that's why I like to incorporate the diet breaks. Her body type naturally seems to get lean pretty easy. Um, mm -hmm. She's quite in, very inefficient. So she was able just to lose on consistent calories. Yeah, she, you said the lowest she had to get was like 1,500 calories. And that's for one, about just a one day kind of deplete day before um, going up for peak week. So mainly, we, I think we started around 2,000, worked wow. around about 1,700. But that's remember, pretty. That's pretty, actually pretty high for a female herself. Yeah. But I remember two weeks out. Um, in those six weeks, we got line really lean, almost too quickly. I was very cautious of wanting wanting to preserve muscle mass. Her body right. can lose muscle quite um, quickly. So actually, two weeks out, I remember from Worlds, I had put put her calories up to twenty eight hundred. Oh wow! For three days, just trying to do everything I can to How actually. How much did that freak her out? Yeah, it was definitely, definitely <laughs> a difference. I think a car's around 380, so wow. not too often you have um, a bikini girl two weeks out yeah. on 2,800 calories, but we're just doing it off the biofeedback kind of we're getting, and just, again, it's not just about being lean, but we spend all that time building up that shape, yeah. building up that size. We wanted to preserve that muscle mass for stage, and she did that, she won, became world champion, so it worked out. So with her, as I said, we use those more short, frequent diet breaks, and actually the leaner she got for her, we actually went up in calories just to preserve muscle mass. Yeah, so I think that diet breaks are a great uh, tool to have, uh, but keep in mind like the biggest thing is you have to give yourself enough time because during those diet breaks, you're not making fat loss progress. It's kind of like um, more of a long-term tool to make sure progress continues when you start back dieting, but you're not making progress during those diet break weeks. 
So if you're going to incorporate those, you need to give yourself enough overall time to be able to incorporate those. Lauren was able to do that because she was so lean when she started. Yeah. Um, many girls, if you're, hey, if you get to four weeks out and you still got five kilos to lose, you're probably not going to be able to do diet breaks. You're going to have to push through all the way. The downside is, well, the body mass loss, that sort of thing. So the other thing I think we would say is give yourself enough time. That's it. So I think what I made a mistake of in the past when I first learned diet, about diet breaks was I was very big on that they increase fat loss efficiency mm -hmm. when you're in a calorie deficit. Right. But by diet breaking often, you're actually taking them out of a calorie deficit. Right. So that's something I've then incorporated now in the future when I'm doing my preps. If, um, for generally, I think um, we're similar. We try to spend around 20 to 30% of that prep out of a calorie deficit. Mm -hmm. So you need to kind of give yourself time. So if you've got um, you know, 12 weeks to get them lean, ideally you want to have a four weeks worth of diet breaks in those 12 mm -hmm. weeks. So that prep generally turns into more of a 16 to 18 week prep. Right. Right. So that's the thing. That's the downside is you're going to spend more time prepping overall. But the upside is you're going to lose fat more efficiently during those diet weeks and you're going to spare a little more lean body mass. So if you guys want to learn more about this stuff and kind of the nuts and bolts of how to do it, I have two books on this, The Complete Contest Prep Guide for you contest prep competitors and Fat Loss Forever for maybe if you're not looking to compete and you want some more information on how fat loss actually works and what are the main things that actually drive fat loss and keeping it off. Uh, those are two great books for you guys. I know you have some books as well. So what are you, what are you, what are your yeah, books? You I've got the go? Gen Pop Transformation Guidebook where I teach people the basics on things like energy balance, macros, how to just actually success, successfully lose body fat. And in that, I also teach you where, how to incorporate diet breaks, um, depending on those three factors I said before. And then I've also got now the art of reverse dieting. So I'm really big on Thing. Again, we're similar on getting the transformation or the fat loss result, but then having a plan after the plan ends. Yeah. I think a lot of people miss out on the diet after the diet. That's generally the, the key um, factor for long-term results. Yeah, exactly. So where can they find those if they want to pick those up? Uh, you can come to my Instagram at Coach Mark Carroll or also Clean Health Fitness Institute, my business I work for. Yeah. And if you guys want my books, go to BioLaneStore.com. Thanks for watching. I'm Lane Norton, he's Mark Carroll. Follow us, like our stuff, buy our stuff. Catch you next time. Thanks guys.